In this video, we're going to take at linear gauges, or actually uh, any type of gauge in uh, reporting services, and we're going to go through the uh, major uh, properties within them. I've got here a, quite a large gauge that I set up here for this demo. Uh, it's, I made it so large just so that it would be easier to see. Uh, by the way, that might be a hint when you're considering gauges in uh, utilization within a report is the uh, how readable they are within the surface area that you have available. But just so you see here, I've already set up a data source and I'm into a, uh, a cube and then I've created a data set. And within that query, I'm bringing back an internet order count and reseller order count. <clears throat> All right, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the surface area. And so if we go back over, Close that out. So back over to the uh, surface area here. The surface area of the graph is this, or the uh, gauge, this entire area. So if I click within there, you can see I picked up the little handles. And so now I've got that surface area and I can drag it on down. And as you see, depending on the surface area, what happens to the display. Gauges are different than uh, standard graphs as they are composed of a lot of different components. The pointer, the range, the, the uh, um, test the uh, bar itself and other components that we want to come in and take a look at. So I've shown you that. Let's take a look at pointer properties. And here I've got two pointers on this uh, graph down here. Oh, I'm sorry, this gauge so that I can show you the property. So if I select either one, <clears throat> I can pop back and forth. And if you look over in here, you're going to see I'm on pointer one. And now I'm on pointer two, and I have them pointing into different data sets. So I can come in here and uh, take a look at the pointer properties. And now I've got that on up. My pointer properties use my standard, showing what it's tied into. And of course, I can do an expression. Here's the default expression because I'm bringing back the sum. See, so I can go into my data sets down here and any of the standard expressions that I want to write. My pointer types, so you can go in and change it, bar, thermometer, whatever, you know, and the marker style itself. So right now it's a wedge, and if we change it out to a diamond, and just tell it it's okay, you see I've just got this, this different pointer, and we'll leave that as it is. And one thing I didn't show you is I can change the colors to anything I want. And I can add borders or shadows, you know, standard configurations. Uh, I'm sure you can figure that out. Here's the placement. This is interesting, where the uh, <coughs> uh, pointer will be in, rel in relation to the scale. And I'll just pop that on inside. So you can see, and now she's moved on up. And if that's where you want it, whatever. And let's move that back to the outside for the rest of the demo. Okay, so I've got that. Now we'll take a look at the scale itself. This is the scale that's in here, so I pop on in. If I right-click in this scale, I can come down and notice the scale has, I can show the labels, and if I clear it on out, the labels are gone, right? And these are your major tick marks. These are your minor tick marks. So I can clear out the minors, and then I've got that. So however you want to do that display. If I go into scale properties, pretty much the same. I can do a reverse. Here's my action, so if someone clicks on the scale, it'll pop in and do whatever you want to do, report, bookmark, or go to a URL. The layout of where within the uh, uh, gauge area the uh, scale is actually going to appear, and then labels, if I have labels within there, and I can change fonts, tick marks, etc. See these major tick marks and the minor tick marks? So I can come down there, and this will say how often they occur across the scale. Okay, we'll take a look at range, and I've got two ranges within. Here I've got, um, here's, I'm, I've got three. Here's one range, here's another, and here's the third. And I moved, now that's actually selected the text box. There we go, selected the range in here. And let's take a look at that as that was giving me so many problems. So now I'm down here in a range property, you can see this range value. I started at 20,000 and I'm moving it on to 35,000. And this is why it's uh, the, rel the relative uh, placement within the scale that I have it inside and where the distance is that I want it to come on, a crown, 
all these actions, fills, and borders are pretty much self-explanatory. So I've got three ranges as we come on in here and see this. And you see this is a different start point and a different end point. And this too. So now what's going to happen as these pointers move up and down the scales, they're going to be within a different range of the color code. Filters. <clears throat> All right, if I came down here within my uh, <clears throat> gauge down here like this, and I put down here and I can put add data grouping, within the add data grouping, I can come in and I could add a filter. So what we would do down in here is internet order count, et cetera, e an equals operator and something down here. So say the internet order count, I would set it up to something, say 1,000, et cetera. And I can come in here and I can set up multiple filters so that if I have multiple gauges displayed, say within a tablet, and I had four rows, four gauges, I could group them together, and within that grouping, I could go through and change the different filters so that they had different displays uh, shown. Labels, pretty clear. <clears throat> so that we have the labels down here, we've got this label on down here like this. And I can also come through and add a label. And if I can grab it, there we go. I can down here and I can, well, I just moved the wrong one. I can grab this label up here and move it on down and put some kind of a label within the scale. And um, your gauge is starting to get a little busy in there, but even so, you can do that. Scale formatting and scale points. <clears throat> Again, if I come in here and look at the scale, and I come down here like this, I can change the uh, points within there. So I can come down and take the layout, change the position, etc. And I can put change the labels within the scales, change the fonts, the numbers, the default, or I can change it to currency or whatever it is I wanted to do. Right. Now we'll come through and run the run this little gauge down in here. Okay, and if you notice what I've got here now, I've got two different counts. So I've got one down here that's below 5,000, and then I've got another one up here in the green range. And so I set separate pointers up here. By the way, this little counter down here is just a little uh, thing I put in there for text box, and it's tied into my data set so that I can come through and see what the value of this actually is. I put that in there just so I could more easily code this on out. Now, if you'll see this... And if I shrink this on down and run it again, this is now pretty much worthless. So if I uh, select my uh, gauge, or I'm sorry, my scale, I'm going to take my scale up in here. And I'm going to take labels. And I'm going to get rid of my labels. Now I come down here and run it again. And now the pointers make more sense. Right, though, uh, frankly, uh, what they're trying to show is only determined by the range in here. And um, so, and then you have your major tick marks and your minor tick marks in here. <clears throat> this might be more informative. It probably would. If I took the ranges and laid them all across down in the bottom so I could get better visual cues, more in the uh, way of uh, doing a KPI, you know, which uh, if these were all aligned one over to the other, then it would be a better cue for the consumer of the report.